So I want to talk to you a little bit about um, sort of why I love the industry, why I'm here, why I'm with Kennywood's parent company, um, and, and what I think is so special about this. A little, and then a little bit, I'm going to give you the same check that I've given to our general managers, to our corporate staff, to the people in the parks. Like I know we have a number of folks here tonight, uh, Marie and others, Jeff. Um, I'm going to give you the same inside baseball I've given them about what we're working on. Um, so it'll be a little bit of, of kind of a business slant from the inside, but I think that uh, you all might appreciate it. So let me just tell you a little bit about why I'm here, why I love the industry. Like, it's like so many people in the industry, it started as a high school job. Uh, I wanted a car. I couldn't afford a car. My parents couldn't really afford a car for me, so I thought I'd get a job um, in high school. And I started out at um, uh, Bush Gardens in Virginia, Bush Gardens in Williamsburg. Anybody ever been there? Okay. So I spent um, almost 20 years of my career at that park um, in food and beverage and as the park president for Bush Gardens and Water Country. So, um, you know, I started there, and I think, like, when you're in the industry, when you walk out in a theme park, 99% of the people are happy. We might not pull that off every day, but generally, it's somebody's day off, they're riding a coaster, it's a date, they're there with their grandchildren, they're there with a friend, um, they're in a good mood. And I think as, as somebody who works in the industry, you feed off that. So it wasn't a plan for me to be in the industry for a career, but I think the same reason probably a lot, of, a lot of you like going to parks is the same reason we like working at parks. Um, and, and I don't know anything about the DMV in Pennsylvania, but my, my grandmother worked for the DMV in New York. I know the DMV in California and Florida. And I know that like before people go to the DMV, they're already mad at whoever works there, right? It's not, it's not that person's fault, right? They just don't want to be there. And I always think, I'm so glad I get to work in a theme park because people are happy when they come in, right? They're not upset with me before they even know anything about what happened there. So, so it's a great, a great, great business. Um, I've also worked at, in um, California. I was the uh, park president for uh, SeaWorld in San Diego and Aquatica in San Diego. And also served as um, chief operating officer, interim chief, chief executive officer there. Uh, worked at Bush Gardens Tampa for, for several years. Um, so I've been in a lot of different states in the industry. I love the industry. Um, I'm really excited to hear how much people here in uh, Western Pennsylvania care about care about Kennywood and Ottawa and the parks here. So, so just thrilled to be here. Um, so let me tell you a little bit else. So that's sort of me in the industry. But let me tell you a little bit about why I'm excited about being part of Kennywood's parent company. And I know, I know a lot of you love the park. It's got a lot of local history. It was family owned here. People felt a sense of pride. And um, you know, I know there's been some criticism maybe over, over a number of years that maybe that, that local sense of pride isn't, isn't what you want it to be. And, um, and I, I respect and understand that. But I also would like to tell you, we're, we're really a new company too. We have new owners, we've gone private. It's part of why I'm with the company. Um, we have largely um, in, in our headquarters offices, I'm not talking about here at Kennywood, um, but we have largely um, new teams making those decisions. I think we have great people in our parks. I've been inspired by the people in our parks at Kennywood and a lot of the parks I've been able to travel to. I've been to about 15 of our parks in the first three months, wow. traveling every weekend. <laughs> um, but um, it's a great portfolio of parks. It's a great company. It's positioned well, I think, for the future. So I'm really excited to be here. So what excites me about the portfolio? I'm gonna talk to you about parks outside of Western Pennsylvania. I was talking to the folks at our table. And I know a lot of you travel a lot, so you probably know more about these parks than I do. But you know, what's, what's unique? The, um, the first park I, I went to, I think it was in um, San Dimas, but I, the second park I went to was Lake Compounds. And, and all I've ever heard of was Boulder Dash in the industry. I've never been to the park, right? Um, and I was just blown away. I was like, there's nothing like this. This lake, these mountains, this campground, these cabins, this water park, this history, these iconic, beautiful buildings, these rides. So, and, and when we look at the consumer research for that park, people love it. When we look at the consumer awareness for that park, it's not so great. People don't know. So, you know, that's a great opportunity for, for a person in the business like me. You have a great asset with lots of potential. People love it. They just need to know more about it. Um, and I think the thing about this park is the same thing about the next park that, that you all will know that I think is, is really cool. And that is, it's, 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 it's historic amusement, it's traditional amusement, 
and we embrace it. And I was looking at Brian's, um, you know, the sort of art behind the park, the mid-century modern, the 1899, the, you know, all the different generations. Um, the parks embrace amusement. And I think that's a special niche for us. You get a special feel, you get a special energy level. Uh, so the history, the energy, the vibe, the way we embrace it at Kennywood and Lake Compounds to me, it was, it's been pretty exciting to see these parks for the first time um, ever for me. And then I think we also have in our portfolio an amazing and unique core competency in children's parks. Um, so you know that we have, we have Ottawa uh, very close here. And then also, and I think Jeff mentioned all the awards they've gotten, we also have Storyland in New Hampshire, um, which is an amazing park as well. A few folks know that park as well. Um, again, really, really strong consumer feedback, really special niche um, for, for children, appealing to kids. Um, so that's something unique that, that our company has. And then um, we also have a really strong water portfolio across the country. And, and the other thing I like about the portfolio is we're in really great markets. Pittsburgh's a great market, 2.3, 2.4 million people. Um, that's a great market to make your home for theme parks. Um, we're also in Los Angeles. This is uh, Raging Waters Los Angeles. We have a lot of work going on there as well. It's the largest water park on the West Coast, largest in California, of course, it's West Coast. And then we're also in New York uh, at Splish Splash, which is really a beautiful water park. I had a chance to see it in the winter. Water parks generally look terrible when they're closed, if you've ever been there. <laughs> There are leaves in the river, they don't, you know, they don't generally look good. Splish Splash looks good in the middle of the New York winter to me. So I'm excited to get back and see that um, when the pools are filled. So, you know, I want to go back a bit um, and just talk to you about this second point here. So the industry excites me. I'm excited about being here. I love the, you know, the affinity that I see for the brands right here in Pittsburgh. Um, and, and I'm excited about our portfolio. But I'm going to talk to you about what we're working on inside the business. So the first thing, this is really, I don't know if you've ever seen this, it's called a service profit chain. That doesn't sound very great, but, but it is a great idea, which is you start with people, you, your talent inside, your service, your people, your talent, take care of your employees. You focus on your guest service, your guest experience, innovating your guest experience, and the business results follow. So that's, that's a bit of the model that we're taking right now. It's the same message that I give to the folks um, internally in our company. So first, with people and organization, um, what are we working on? <clears throat> um, one big thing that we're working on is we are making Pittsburgh home to the support services for 21 of our parks in the US and Australia. So we just announced that this week, a number of our functions, uh, including marketing, um, uh, safety, um, uh, F&B, um, construction and maintenance, um, all sorts of uh, legal, all sorts of those operations are going to be moving from Newport Beach, California to Pittsburgh. Initially, <laughs> there's a lot of reason for it. Our biggest parks are here. We've got three parks, you know, right almost in the metro area. We've got four in Pennsylvania, but 70% of our business is in New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and New Hampshire. So we're going to be closer to the center of our operations. We're still going to have um, finance and IT um, in California, where we have six or so facilities. Um, so we'll have some support functions there, some here. We're going to be leasing a facility um, here in the suburbs. We're working on the details of that um, as a temporary, um, temporary answer. But we're going to be building um, a new office complex at Kennywood because I think culturally it's very, very important for people in a support role. What some people might call it a corporate office. I call it a support center to be in the park, listen to the employees, listen to the guests, and not to get too far away from the core of the business. So I'm really excited. I'm uh, excited about walking out of my office and having lunch inside Kennywood. That sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> um, so that's people and organization. The other thing that we're working on is. Um, We've done a lot of work around staffing and scheduling in our parks. Um, there's more work to be done there. Um, you know, I believe strongly we have, to, we have to offer competitive wages in a number of our markets. Um, we're taking some significant measures on that front. Um, Idlewell is one of those. Um, so I think that's really important to provide the service levels that you expect and beyond. Uh, so that's people and organization. That's where we're starting out in the parks. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the guest experience. Um, again, staffing, scheduling, I think 
think that's part of the guest experience. Um, we have a huge focus both on the business side, but also on the experience side in taking care of our past members. I think that's really critical for us. Um, and then on, on integrating newness in our parks, integrating fun, integrating new reasons to visit, um, whether those be events, attractions, or, or other compelling reasons to visit. So the guest experience is a very important part. Uh, Nick showed you some of the work happening at Kennywood uh, in terms of restrooms. Um, you know, might not be the most exciting topic, but, but in the U.S. we're, we're spending millions to re rehab restrooms um, in the portfolio of parks. Um, we're spending to improve our, our F&B operations. We're putting in benches and shade and umbrellas, um, you know, working to up the level of paint and other things. Some of these things are going to take time, but we feel good about the direction that we're headed. And then finally, the business performance. You know, I think a big, a big key to this is, um, is our past membership, our season past membership and our parks. Um, we're, we're working to make those passes more compelling. Um, Nick talked about parking earlier. So a lot of our parks didn't have any option where parking was actually included with a season's pass. You could buy it as an add-on. Um, so in many of our markets that didn't have that, our top passes now will offer free parking, unlimited free parking with those passes. Uh, I think it's important and we want to encourage more visitation, not, uh, not discourage more visitation. Um, and then also on the business performance, um, we think uh, food and beverage are in part dining experiences across the portfolio. There's a lot of opportunity. Um, that's something that's going to that's gonna happen over time. Uh, I think there's some great concepts here in Pittsburgh in our parks, um, but I also think there's room for new and exciting concepts um, here and in our other parks as well. So that's, you know, that's a little bit about why I'm here, what's exciting to me about the company. Um, thrilled to be here to listen to all of you. This is what we're focused on generally in the business. Um, but I'm really, you know, really excited to listen to you. And I don't know if, Bill, we have time for a few questions. I'd be happy to take them if we do. Okay, great. All right, have that. I'll start with my table here. <laughs> Since your experience has been in large corporate style chain parks, what's the biggest differences you see between working for Palos and the smaller parks and what different kind of challenges you have in that role? I think, I think it's an advantage. Um, you know, the, the parks that we have are generally smaller format. Kennywood's a larger format. Um, but I think the advantage is when you want to get a lot of things done for your guests, for your employees, for the business, um, it's easier to get it done in this kind of model. Um, so, so I'm excited about that. Um, I, you know, I think that, hopefully that kind of answers your question, but I think it's, you know, it's just easier to get things done. It's a, it's a great team, I'm excited. And I see, um, I see you know, momentum in terms of what we're trying to accomplish already. <laughs> I have, I have not. I've done some reading on it. I have, I've never been there, but I heard, I heard some, some good things about it. Really good. Yeah. I, I have, I have not. I, I couldn't comment on it if I had. So, yeah. Hi. Um, a, lot, a lot of what you um, said kind of focuses on improving the existing operations. Um, kind of expanding on that, uh, his comment. Do you foresee adding additional facilities to the uh, palace portfolio in the future? Yeah, so I, I can't, you know, I can't comment on M&A because really no company would or does. Um, but what, what I can say is that, um, you know, we're interested in growing. Um, we have new owners, new investors, um, very smart, very dedicated people who are doing the right things for the business, for the long-term vision. Um, but I don't, you know, there's nothing I can talk about or, or comment in terms of that specifically. Bye. On like the standard corporate level of how you guys operate your parks, do you have like a ratio set like every one to three years you're looking to add an attraction versus like have to be upgrades or things like that? Do you have like a corporate ratio you guys like to follow up? That is um that is something that the new new executive team and the um, and the parks and our global team are working through together. But we, but we absolutely do. It's a, it's a really good way to plan. If you have a water park category, a children's park category, a theme park category, um, and then large and small, um, what, is the, what is the frequency of newness? Um, we want to endeavor to have something new to talk about you know, at some level every year. And uh, that may not be a ride. That may be an event or a show or something else. 
but uh, you know, long term, I'd like to never do that. But absolutely, the way you describe it is a good is a good way to think about how we do it. Hi. Yeah, uh, so Palace is part of Parcus, the uh, Grupo Parcus Rudidos. Um, I'm thrilled to be part of the group. I had a chance, you know, in in, um, in coming into the company to a lot of talk to a lot of the global team, to the new ownership group and others. And um, you know, as I said, there's there's a real focus on doing the right things for the business. Um, you know, to have a have a view of um, where we want to be in a number of years, and I think it's the right approach to the business. So. So I've been nothing but encouraged, um, you know, by the relationship of of, uh, of our parent company and of Palace uh, coming into the company new. I can't really speak for the past so much because I'm uh, just three months in here. <laughs> Hi. Uh, as you, I'm sure you're very aware uh, that part under uh, Palace currently, you have three of uh, uh, the most historic amusement parks in the, in the country, including Lake Conrad, which is the oldest one in the United States. And we also have uh, Idaho, which is the third oldest in the United States. Right. So uh, I hope that history will remain an important part, of, and especially in the National Historic Landmark. I hope that it continues to be a uh, major influence in the marketability of the parks. I'm just going to say I agree with you. I think uh, you know. I think you said Yay. it well, and it's you know it's clear that's important to people. So, so I agree with you. I think we have to be we have to be respectful of the history of the parks, honor it, you know, celebrate it where we can. Um, and we also have to in, in, introduce new things. We have to continue to expand our audiences, and we'll do that. And I think we can do both. Good point. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask about the intellectual properties. Um, for, for years, Kennywood has. For decades, Kennywood succeeded because they created their own brand, both with the park name and things in it, Potato Patch, Thunderbolt, Steel Phantom, Phantom Revenge, the whole full Phantom theme, Lost Kennywood. And people have gone there and enjoyed that unique experience and it became Kennywood because of all those things. The last several years, it seems like most of any, any new thing has to have an intellectual property attached to it. What's your vision for that? Do you think that's, that's essential or are you willing to, to try things that are in the park brand? Yeah, I, I hadn't heard it characterized the way you did. Um, so, you know, it's a bit of a new perspective for me. So, um, as I think about it, what I'll say is, it certainly isn't going to be required that anything that we introduce new is, has an intellectual property that, you know, that comes from outside the company. Um, if, if something makes sense, you know, I think that makes, that's, that's, um, that's a good move for us. I think Steelers make a lot of sense for Kennywood. Um, if there are other things that make sense, we'll do them, but it's not a requirement for new attractions that we're, that we're listening. Hi, Jeff. Um, I was wondering, so over the last couple of years, the park has kind of gotten a reputation for having sort of an aggressive policy and operations whenever there's precipitation. Uh, I think many of us feel it's a detriment, especially to people who travel a long time or have limited time to take off to visit the park. So I was wondering if you could provide any clarification if there are any plans um, to have a little more reliable operating schedule, especially given the fact that Pittsburgh has such uncertain weather these days. Uh, yes, <laughs> there are plans, and, and as I said, I'm, I'm new, so I'm not as familiar with the operations of every park like Kennywood as I am with you know some of the more issues across the portfolio. But um, uh, Rick Semmel, um, who's our, our Vice President of Theme Parks, has been helping out the Kennywood team um, as of late, and that is absolutely on his agenda. We discussed it this week, um, that, that uh, guests, people who are fans of the park, want a little more clarity around operating hours. So. It's not something that we'll ever 100% be able to, to assure because of weather and because of when, when it makes sense to, to open. But as I understand it, it's, uh, 
not maybe consistent with what the industry does. And uh, I think we can I think we can do better on that front. Rick's can, committed to do better on that front. I don't have any exact news on it, but I know that he's working on it. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it up. All right. Did I miss anybody? Well, you've got my email, and uh, <laughs> I just wanted to say thanks so thanks so much for for allowing me to be here. Thanks for uh, you know your your devotion to, to theme parks in general, and uh, certainly the ones here in Pittsburgh. Um, I'll be moving here in just a few weeks, and I'm, I'm excited to be your neighbor. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.